From our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. On the 22nd anniversary of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks this week, American Muslims have been reflecting on the tragedy and its impact on their lives. The attacks, which killed nearly 3,000, affected the entire world, but American Muslims faced Islamophobia like never before. Many were wrongly accused and considered guilty by association, leading to widespread anti-Muslim attacks. Khalid Ali Beydoun, a legal scholar at Wayne State School of Law in Detroit, says Islamophobia is now a global problem. He notes that America exported Islamophobia around the world, possibly influencing other countries such as China, Burma and India in their treatment of Muslims. Beydoun adds that Islamophobia is less prevalent today than it was during the presidency of Donald Trump. Yet the problem persists. Nihad Awad, co-founder of the Council on American Islamic Relations, says the post-9-11 backlash has been intense and violent. Hate crimes against Muslims increased significantly, with a more than 1,000 percent increase from 2000 to 2001 after the attacks. Many Muslims, including Awad, faced increased scrutiny and some were monitored by the U.S. government. Despite these challenges, CARE has grown and now has 60 full-time attorneys to address injustices against Muslims. A change in official attitudes toward Muslims has been evident in recent U.S. administrations. President Joe Biden reinstated the White House tradition of hosting an Eid celebration, disrupted by former President Trump. The White House has also hosted a meeting on Islamophobia earlier this year, facilitating dialogue between government officials and Muslim community leaders. In related news, Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser and the Council of the District of Columbia hosted a remembrance ceremony to commemorate victims of the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. On Monday, the U.S. marked the 22nd anniversary of the tragedy. A resolution was presented commemorating both the anniversary and the vital role first responders play in protecting the residents and visitors of the District of Columbia. A moment of silence was also held in honor of D.C. residents, as well as local public school teachers and students who perished in the attacks. President Joe Biden is calling a new agreement on an India-Middle East-Europe corridor historic. Speaking on the sidelines of the G20 summit in India's capital, New Delhi, he says the project will include investments in ships and railroads. The corridor will stretch from India to Europe and connect the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan and Israel. Biden says the investments are more important than ever as the world faces challenges such as climate change, food insecurity and the COVID-19 pandemic. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has announced his country would invest $20 billion in the corridor. Egypt on Sunday condemned Ethiopia's fourth filling of the Blue Nile Dam as a violation of international law. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announced completion of the last filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. That is built on the Blue Nile, which is a tributary of the Nile River. The Egyptian Foreign Ministry says Ethiopia's unilateral action was detrimental to the interests of the states on the banks of the river. It said under a 2015 water-sharing agreement, Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan must agree on the rules for filling and operating the dam before filling begins. Last month, the three countries resumed negotiations on the dam on the Blue Nile. Egypt expressed hope a significant breakthrough would be made at the upcoming round of talks in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, paving the way for a water-sharing agreement. Egypt views the dam as an existential threat to its share of Nile water and wants Ethiopia to reach a binding agreement on filling and operating the dam. Ethiopia sees the dam as critical to its development and denies any interference with the water shares of Egypt and Sudan. At least 43 people were killed in an airstrike on a marketplace in the Sudanese capital Khartoum on Sunday. Sudan's doctor's syndicate says 55 people were also injured in the attack that targeted an open market in Mayo neighborhood in South Khartoum. It was not yet clear who was behind the airstrike. The attack came amid heavy fighting between the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group in the capital. The RSF accused the army of carrying out an airstrike in the Mayo neighborhood, but the Sudanese army denied the accusation. More than 3,000 civilians have been killed and thousands injured in clashes between the army and the paramilitary group since April, according to local medics. Several ceasefire agreements brokered by Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have failed to end violence in the country. 
A former Pakistani cricketer was sentenced on Monday to 12 years in prison for inciting the murder of a far-right Dutch leader. Khalid Latif offered nearly $25,000 in 2018 for the murder of Geert Wilder, who tried to organize a contest for cartoons insulting Prophet Muhammad. Latif was convicted in absentia by a Dutch court in The Hague. According to the local English daily NRC Handelsblad, the court ruled the suspect added fuel to the fire and even urged people to kill Wilders. Latif is unlikely to serve the sentence as Pakistan has refused repeated requests from Dutch authorities for his questioning. After worldwide condemnation and protests, including in Pakistan, Wilders cancelled the cartoon contest. However, he has been under round-the-clock state protection since 2004. Latif was banned from cricket for five years in 2017 for manipulating a Pakistan Super League match in Dubai. On X, formerly known as Twitter, Wilders called on the Dutch government to put strong pressure on Pakistani authorities to extradite Latif. UN panel to discuss incidents of Quran desecration. Details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. UN Human Rights Council head Volker Turk said on Monday, recent attacks on the Quran will be discussed at the UN body on October 6. Turk made the remarks at the opening session of the 54th Human Rights Council in Geneva. He said a spate of roughly 30 recent Quran burnings is the latest manifestation of polarization and fragmentation of societies and countries. At the Human Rights Council's last session in July, Turk called on states to combat the weaponization of religious differences for political purposes. Islamophobic individuals and groups in Northern Europe have repeatedly engaged in Quran burnings and similar attempts to desecrate the Islamic scripture. It has sparked outrage in Muslim countries and around the world. At least three people were killed, including a lawmaker, in a bomb blast in the central Somali town of Algaras on Monday. The blast occurred shortly after the Somali National Army liberated the town from Al-Shabaab militants. The lawmaker, Muhammad Muhammad, was killed while accompanying other politicians and army officials to visit the area. Two other people were also killed. The Somali-based Al-Qaeda-affiliated terrorist group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack. It comes as the Somali government is under pressure to increase its efforts to combat Al-Shabaab. The terror group has been waging an insurgency in Somalia for over a decade. Shuttered and abandoned houses in rural Xinjiang signal China's crackdown on the Uyghur Muslim minority. That's according to French news agency AFP, which visited Uyghur-majority villages in Yarkant and found half the adult male population may have been detained. Since 2017, China has imprisoned more than one million Uyghurs as part of its anti-terrorism policy, leading to allegations of widespread abuse. Police documents obtained by German researcher Adrian Zenz indicate at the height of the campaign, as many as half of the adult males in the villages may have been detained. The U.S. called this genocide, while the United Nations has spoken of possible crimes against humanity. China refers to these detention centers as vocational schools and claims all inmates graduated by 2019. Many reports, including those from human rights activists, suggest otherwise. An American meat company claims some leading Islamic scholars have suggested cultured meat can be considered halal under certain conditions. Cultured meat is produced from cells without slaughtering animals in the conventional way. This meat production method aims to address global concerns about climate change, food safety, and animal welfare. The company Good Meat is the cultured meat division of San Francisco-based food technology company Eat Just Incorporated. It claims to have received the halal decree from scholars in Saudi Arabia, including Sheikh Abdullah al Manea, Professor Abdullah al Mutlaq, and Professor Saad al Shatri. The religious ruling paves the way for the global recognition of cultured meat. About 25% of the world's population are halal consumers. The global halal meat industry is expected to reach over $375 billion by 2030. Recent surveys show most consumers in major Middle Eastern countries would accept cultured meat if it met halal standards. A Canadian court has begun the trial of a white supremacist accused of murdering a Pakistani Muslim family of five in London, Ontario. The defendant, Nathaniel Veltman, had pleaded not guilty. He is accused of attacking the Afzal family as they tried to cross an intersection in London. The family was hit by Veltman's truck, which had apparently failed to break. 
Four family members were killed in the attack, and the fifth, a nine-year-old boy, was injured seriously. Veltman admitted to committing the crime intentionally and said his motive was to send a message to the Muslim community. In opening remarks, federal prosecutor Sara Sheikh emphasized Veltman, a self-described white nationalist, had planned to kill Muslims. She said Veltman was inspired by other white supremacist mass murderers such as Brenton Tarrant and Anders Breivik. Veltman's manifesto, titled A White Awakening, reflected radical white nationalist views and called for making life difficult for Muslims. Trial evidence includes video footage from cameras that recorded the killings. Witnesses also saw the family being hit. DNA matched the victims found on the trunk of Veltman's truck. The Afzal family, who moved to Canada from Pakistan, had been living in the country for several years. The trial is expected to last eight weeks. A violent storm has devastated eastern Libya, killing 5,000 people and leaving 10,000 missing due to flash floods. Storm Daniel brought heavy rains and flooding to the region and caused widespread damage. Libyan Health Minister Osman Abdul Salil told Andalou News Agency most of the deaths were in the city of Derna. Entire neighborhoods were swept away there. According to Red Cross representative Tamar Ramadan, the death toll is enormous and is expected to rise in the coming days. Hisham Shkwiat, Minister of Civil Aviation, who returned from the area, says he saw bodies lying everywhere, in the sea, valleys and under buildings. The United Nations called for urgent international assistance for the humanitarian emergency. A Palestinian-Brazilian specialist in infectious diseases has been honored with one of Brazil's highest awards. The Parliamentary State Council of Roots and Alien Cultures Communities recognized Dr. Jamal Suleiman's work to preserve the memory and cultural identity of the Palestinian people and their historic land. Suleiman is a second-generation Palestinian refugee born in Sao Paulo in 1959. His father was expelled from Haifa during the 1948 Israeli-Arab War. Suleiman has worked as a physician and researcher at the Emilio Ribas Institute and trained medical students. He is an active member of the Palestinian community in Brazil and works to raise awareness about the situation in his homeland. Suleiman said the award was a great honor for him and the Palestinian community in Brazil. He spoke about the importance of preserving Palestinian culture and identity and said food can be an effective way to do so. Suleiman has appeared on popular TV programs promoting Palestinian dishes, including the well-known maklouba. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.